I leave you my witness and testimony that I know that Jesus is the Christ. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. He is our best friend in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pledge my full capacities and loyalty to my brethren and to the Lord and ask for his peace and blessing to be with me as I grow in my assignment. I have a great testimony of the gospel, for I know it is true. I testify to you that we are the only true church of Jesus Christ on the earth today, and one of our great missions in this life as members of the church is to share the gospel truths with all of our Heavenly Father's children. May the Lord bless each one of us that our ears may hear and our eyes might be opened, that together we may learn to live the gospel and find the joy that only the gospel can give to us. I know God lives and that all men are his children. I testify that Jesus is the Christ. And if all men will seek to know the truth, and follow his example, we will be able to live up to the spiritual expectations of our Heavenly Father. The light of the Lord is real, my brethren. He will lead every soul out of the clouds of darkness and away from the fog of doubt and uncertainty with the perfect eternal sig signal that will guarantee safety peace and confidence, I bear testimony that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that he touched the life of the prophet Joseph Smith, and through him the fullness of the gospel has been restored to the earth to bless and guide all mankind. Remember, a positive attitude, a well-thought-out plan, and consistent self-discipline can help us improve our circumstances. Applying these keys in our daily work will help produce more income, and practicing them in our homes will help reduce expenses. When we combine these principles with keeping the commandments of God, we can learn to become better managers of our time and resources and become financially secure. May the Lord bless all of us. To this end, I pray humbly to the Master Teacher, the Lord Jesus Christ, whose resurrection we celebrate at this Easter time. I say, I thank Thee, O Lord, for teaching us that there is no greater call than to be an effective teacher. May God bless all of us that we will have the courage to commit ourselves to a specific date for having someone ready to hear the gospel message. Then may we proceed to call upon the Lord to guide our efforts so that thousands of our Heavenly Father's children will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. May we all look upon this not as a duty, but rather as a great privilege. A wonderful chorus of missionaries sang to us yesterday these words, called to serve him, heavenly king of glory, chosen heir to witness for his name, onward, ever onward, as we glory to his name. May God bless all of you young men to desire to serve him. Now, my brothers and sisters, I would ask for an interest in your faith and prayers. I express my affection to my wife, my children, who sustain me in whatever the Lord might ask me to do. I am grateful for this abundant blessing and pray humbly that I might serve you, the membership of this church, in a way that would be pleasing 
and acceptable unto our Heavenly Father. Since my ordination to this special calling, I have had many hours to ponder the sacred responsibility that now rests upon my shoulders. The calling of an apostle is to be a special witness of the name of Jesus Christ in all the world, particularly of his divinity and of his bodily resurrection from the dead. I testify to you that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of our eternal Heavenly Father. He is our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend and brother. I love him with all my heart and count it the greatest privilege that could ever come to a man to be a special witness to his name throughout the world. I testify to you, my brothers and sisters, that I know that the Lord lives. And I know that we, when we are willing to seek his help and guidance, when we will trust in him completely, he will bless us to understand what to do and how to proceed in the wonderful work of sharing this glorious message with others. Not long ago, one of my children said, Dad, sometimes I wonder if I will ever make it. The answer I gave to her is the same I would give to you if you have had similar feelings. Just do the very best you can each day. Do the basic things. And before you realize it, your life will be full of spiritual understanding that will confirm to you that your Heavenly Father loves you. When a person knows this, then life will be full of purpose and meaning, making balance easier to maintain. Live every day with joy in your heart, brothers and sisters. I humbly testify that life can be wonderful. I pray that as we leave this conference, each one of us will take from the messages of the brethren those principles that will help us become more self-sufficient as saints. I testify that we have been taught the truth during this conference, that God lives and Jesus Christ is his son. The gospel has been restored in these latter days. With humility, but with firm conviction, we declare to all the world that we know for a surety that God the Father and Jesus Christ his Son live. We know that they visited the prophet Joseph Smith in the spring of 1820. They spoke to Joseph, and through him they revealed wonderful true doctrines and restored the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ that had been lost from the world. We invite all men and women everywhere to know of the restoration of the gospel, for in so doing, they will develop a deep reverence and love for God, his beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and their creations. I bear testimony that true reverence will bring peace, joy, and happiness to us all. I bear my testimony that God is no respecter of persons. We should follow his example in all of our associations with our fellow men. I testify that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of all mankind. He loves all men and looks to each one of us to do the same. May the Lord bless us to protect ourselves, our families, the spirit of our homes, and help us improve our world through working for improved television programming. I leave you my testimony that we have only one sure way to secure our homes and our families, and that is through learning and living the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and help you prevent anything of an evil nature from entering your homes. I pray humbly. Brothers and sisters, the missionaries need our faith and prayers. Pray fervently every day for their safety and protection. 
For this is one important way we can all support them in accomplishing the essential assignment of proclaiming the gospel to all the world. I bear testimony that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We are engaged in His work. I testify that through the faith and prayers of all members of the Church, we will continue moving this great work forward to the final victory. May the Lord bless each one of us to follow the counsel of our prophets. We need to have family and personal prayers. Study the scriptures, particularly the Book of Mormon. Hold family home evenings. Follow the admonition of the Savior to love one another, be thoughtful and kind and gentle within the family. Through these and other similar small and simple things, we have the promise that our lives will be filled with peace and joy. I know that Jesus Christ lives and that this is His Church. I testify that His gospel will continue to fill the world as it continues to fill the hearts of individual members of the Church. Brethren, we need not fear the future if we will keep the Lord's commandments and live to be His worthy servants. You can stay morally clean and prepare now for a happy future. May the Lord bless every one of you to so live. We plead with you to take time for your children and your grandchildren while they are young. Special moments may come only once. Before we are aware, they have grown older and our best opportunity for teaching them how to live happily and fulfilling lives is past. I know that we are all spirit children of a loving Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, every one of us with a glorious destiny if we will humble ourselves as little children and keep the commandments of God. May we be blessed with the Spirit of Christ in our own lives, and may we have His Spirit with us in teaching little children is my humble prayer. May God bless you, dear sisters, that each one of you can be an example, a light to those around you. You are the daughters of your Heavenly Father who loves you. May each one of you manifest your love for Him through your righteous, exemplary lives. Always know in your hearts, dear sisters, that the Church is true. I testify to you that Jesus Christ lives and he presides over this church. President Benson is the prophet of the Lord. Heavenly Father and his beloved Son love the precious women of the church, as do all of your leaders. I bear humble witness that Joseph Smith is one of the great noble ones to come to the earth. He and his brother Hiram deserve our honor, respect, and gratitude, as do other members of their family who assisted with the restoration of the fullness of the gospel. I testify that President Ezra Taft Benson is the prophet of God at this time, and the apostles and other general authorities who are seated on this stand are ordained of God to preside over the Church. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, stands at the head of the Church. Our Heavenly Father lives and watches over each of His children. Today we are not called to pull handcarts through the snow-swept plains of Wyoming. However, we are called to live, foster, and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is our privilege to invest our means and our time to bless others. Each one of us must do all that we can to preserve our Latter-day Saint way of life. A vital part of this preservation is a willingness to set aside personal desires and replace them with unselfish sacrifice for others. God bless you, brothers and sisters, to know, as I know, that God lives, that Jesus is the Christ, and that being a member of His Church, the only true and living Church, is never a burden. 
but always a great blessing. That we may be grateful for this blessing, I pray humbly. I assure you, my brothers and sisters, that our Heavenly Father is aware of us, individually and collectively. He understands the spiritual, physical, and emotional difficulties we face in the world today. In fact, they are all part of His plan for our eternal, for our eternal growth and development. And His promise to us is sure. He that endureth in faith and doeth my will, the same shall overcome. The Savior promised, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. This is the heritage of the disciples of the Lord. May we all find the peace of God which passeth all understanding that can be found only through charity, faith, and hope. May I leave you my testimony that I know that the Lord Jesus Christ lives. He has restored His Church to the earth through the prophet Joseph Smith. Our assurance of eternal life rests in our love of God and keeping of His commandments. This knowledge gives me hope and faith. May it be so with each of you, I humbly pray. May God bless each one of you young men and women with a pure heart and a sincere desire to serve the Lord worthily. I know this Church is true. I know God lives and Jesus is the Christ. I know that if you, the youth of the Church, will have the courage to keep your covenants and follow the counsel of your parents and Church leaders, you will have the desire and the strength to live worthy lives. You then will be prepared for your responsibilities in your homes, in the Church, and in your communities, and will be prepared to return to your Heavenly Father. May God bless every one of our precious youth. May God bless you, my dear sisters, in your personal lives, in your homes and families, and in your Church callings. May He bless you for your faithful service. May you feel the comforting assurance that your Heavenly Father loves each one of you, His daughters, and that the way He marks for you is the way to perfect fairness and freedom in this life and in eternity. To this I testify and humbly pray for the blessings to be with you. Leadership based on love brings incredible power. It is real and it generates lasting results in the lives of our Father's children. May God bless you, brothers and sisters, to find inspired consensus and unity as you counsel together in your service one to another. Only in so doing can the Church and our families begin to approach their full potential for doing good among the children of God on earth. I know God lives, and Jesus is the Christ. I know we can accomplish their work better through unity and love as we sit in council one with another. Let us remember the basic council of the Church is the family council. Fathers and mothers should apply diligently the principles I have discussed in their relationships with each other and with their children. In doing so, our homes can become a heaven on earth. Brothers and sisters, let us work together as never before in our stewardships to find ways to make more effective use of the wondrous power of councils. I ask you to consider all I said on this subject last October with what I have said today. I testify that we can bring the full force of God's revealed plan for gospel governance into our ministries as we counsel together. May God bless us to stand united as we strengthen the Church and our members. Brothers and sisters, we know the truth. Because we do, we are expected to share it with all of our Heavenly Father's children. To our dear friends of the Church, please do not let pass this opportunity 
to receive personal revelation from God. Consider what I have said. Weigh it carefully. Measure it against the things you believe. Hold fast to all that is true. And add to that the fullness of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Take into account what you have felt as you have listened. You can know if these things are true by asking God. Listen for His answer, then respond to what you feel. If you will do so, I believe you will come to know, as I know, that Jesus, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is God's true Church upon the earth. Now may God bless you, my dear friends, with peace and joy the gospel gives. My testimony coincides with the testimony of the beloved, beloved Apostle John. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. May we search for the doctrines and commandments of the great plan of happiness, and when we learn them, may we embrace them willingly. By doing so, we will find lasting joy, happiness, and peace. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I leave you my testimony that the Lord's promise of peace comes from knowing and living the principles of our Heavenly Father's plan of happiness. Surely Joseph was inspired when he wrote of his brother Hiram. Thy name shall be written for those who come after thee to look upon, that they may pattern after thy works. May we help keep the promise made to Hiram in section 124 of the Doctrine and Covenants, that his name shall be had in honorable remembrance from generation to generation forever and ever. His name most certainly will be honorably revered as we follow his example and pattern after his works. May the memory of Hiram Smith and all of our faithful forefathers never fade from our minds, I pray humbly. Through his prophet, God has promised to replace the spiritual hunger that plagues mankind with untold bounty from his own table. He asks, all he asks is that we come unto Christ and then do all we can through our families and with the support of the Church to help all of our Father's children succeed spiritually in this critical journey of mortality. Behold, said the Lord, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and he will sup and will sup with him and he with me. I testify to you that Jesus is the Christ. He lives and invites everyone to partake of the joyful feast of the gospel. Joseph Smith is the prophet of the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ in these latter days. May we all be blessed, my beloved brothers and sisters, with an increased desire to seek after and feast on the things of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, join with us and begin now to prepare for a spiritual journey next year by walking in the footsteps of our beloved pioneers in every land. We must be sure that the legacy of faith received from them is never lost. Let their heroic lives touch our hearts, and especially the hearts of our youth, so that the fire of true testimony and unwavering love for the Lord and His Church will blaze brightly within each one of us as it did our faithful pioneers. Their accomplishments were possible because they knew, as I know, that our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, restored the gospel of Jesus Christ through the prophet Joseph Smith, and that this Church will continue to roll forth until it fills the whole earth. 
standing on the same hill from which the Willie Company first saw their rescuers, I contemplated the joy that will fill our hearts when we fully come to know the eternal significance of the greatest rescue, the rescue of the family of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is through him that we have promise of eternal life. Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the source of spiritual power that will give you and me the assurance that we have nothing to fear from the journey. I know the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and our unwavering faith in Him will see us safely along our journey through life. These are difficult times in which we are living. In some respects, it is perhaps the most challenging age of all time. We want you young men to know that we are aware of that, but we are also aware that God has reserved some of His strongest spirit children for these perilous days. While God's laws and standards of right and wrong are under attack at every turn, we are a great army of priesthood holders who are prepared to make a valiant stand for truth and right. Brethren, let us stand shoulder to shoulder as bearers of the priesthood of God and followers of Christ and do what we can to make this a better, safer, and happier world. Let us be witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places, I humbly pray. My brothers and sisters, we need to embrace, study, and appreciate the revealed truths that are ours. We need to declare the gospel generously and kindly to all of our Father's children that every soul might walk in the light and truth of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless each one of us with increased knowledge and testimony, and may we be open and receptive to the spirit of revelation as it has moved upon our prophets in the past and as it will yet move upon the prophets in the future. I pray that we may join together, brothers and sisters, to do our part to prepare every family, adult, youth, and child to ultimately be worthy to receive every blessing that the gospel provides. I bear my witness that the Lord Jesus Christ lives. It is through him that the eternal ordinances of the temple come to the faithful members of the Church. May the Lord bless us with the desire, the wisdom, and the commitment to enthusiastically move this great work forward in our families and in the Church. My brothers and sisters, may God bless every one of us that the fire of our covenant may burn in our hearts like flame unquenchable. May we be prepared spiritually to renew our sacred covenants each week as we partake of the sacrament, that we will honor the Lord and we will be anxious to do our part in these most exciting and great days to build up His Church by strengthening our families. Our safety, our peace lies in working as hard as we can to live as the Father and the Son would have us live, in fleeing from false prophets and false teachers, and in being anxiously engaged in good causes. I know that God lives. Jesus is the Christ. The restored gospel is true, and there is great joy in being anxiously engaged in this true and holy work. So, brothers and sisters, how is it with us? Are we ready to do something? Can each one of us resolve today to increase our personal spiritual preparation by seeking the guidance of the Holy Ghost and then with His power as our companion bless more of our Father's children with understanding and knowledge that the Church is true? I testify that the Savior lives and He will bless 
each one of us if we will do all that we can to move this great work of His Church forward. May each one of us resolve to do something more as we begin this new millennium, is my prayer. We must move forward with the promise that the Spirit will bless us to know what to do and what to say as we assist those who are seeking to know the truth. Let us move, go forward with more faith, never forgetting that the Lord will help us as we turn to Him in mighty prayer. Our Heavenly Father lives and loves each of His children. The Lord Jesus Christ lives. The most important work we can do is to help God's children come to full understanding of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. This I know to be true, and so testify. I promise you in the name of the Lord that if you will listen, not just with your ears, but also with your heart, the Holy Ghost will manifest the truth unto you of the message delivered by President Hinckley, his counselors, the apostles, and other leaders of the Church. The Spirit will prompt you to know what you should do as individuals, as families, in order to follow our counsel that your testimonies might be strengthened and that you might have peace and joy. My brothers and sisters, I testify to you that the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored to the earth through the prophet Joseph Smith. Today we are blessed to be led by God's prophet, President Gordon B. Hinckley. May we listen and then do those things that he teaches us is my humble prayer. Love one another. Be kind to one another, despite our deepest differences. Treat one another with respect and civility. I know and testify that Jesus is the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, and I know that He expects all of us to follow His admonition to be better neighbors. Live in peace, said the Apostle Paul, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. I am grateful that I can witness to you that Jesus is the Christ and He is the Son of God. By following Him in faith and trust, all may find sweet inner peace the gospel has, us, has to offer to us, as it has been taught to us so beautifully during this conference. I hope you can feel the love and the concern that emanates from the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and other Church leaders as we ask you to prepare now to join us in taking the blessings of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ to the people, all the people on the earth. Each one of you is precious and we want you to be successful and secure in the battle for the souls of our Heavenly Father's children. May God bless you with the courage to be true at all times and with the vision to realize who you are and what the Lord has for you to do. Let us follow the admonition of the Prophet Joseph Smith. After all that has been said, our greatest and most important duty is to preach the gospel." Close quote. We can and we must do better, brothers and sisters. I pray that the Lord will grant to each one of us the faith and courage to increase our participation in supporting our full-time missionaries in sharing the restored gospel with all of God's children throughout the world. Besides making our voices heard, let me conclude with seven things that every parent can do to minimize the negative effect media can have on our families. One, we need to hold family councils 
and decide what our media standards are going to be. Two, we need to spend enough quality time with our children that we are consistently the main influence in their lives, not the media or any peer group. Number three, we need to make good media choices ourselves and set good examples for our children. Four, we need to limit the amount of time our children watch TV or play video games or use the internet each day. Virtual reality must not become their reality. Five, we need, we need to use internet filters and TV programming locks to prevent our children from chancing upon things they should not see. And six, we need to have TVs and computers in a much used common room in the home, not in a bedroom or a private place. And seven, we need to take time to watch appropriate meeting media with our children and discuss with them how to make choices that will uplift and build rather than degrade and destroy. May God bless us with courage and wisdom in doing what each one of us can to help turn the tide in the media away from darkness towards truth and light. And may God bless our families to be strong and true to the principles of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, never, never underestimate how precious is the one. Remember always the simple admonition of the Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. Always strive to live worthy of the sacred full blessings of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. In our sorrow over the separation from our dear Nathan has come the peace that only the Savior and the Redeemer can give. Our family has turned to him one by one, and we now sing with greater appreciation and understanding. Oh, it is wonderful that he should care for me enough to die for me. Oh, it is wonderful, wonderful to me. My dear brothers and sisters, may you give to others and receive for yourselves every blessing the Atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ offers. The time has come for all of us to overcome any fear and boldly take every opportunity to share our testimonies of the gospel. May the Lord bless you as you continue to nurture your testimonies through your prayers, your personal gospel study, and your acts of service. With great joy, I humbly testify our Heavenly Father loves us. Jesus is the Christ. Joseph Smith restored the fullness of the everlasting gospel, and the Book of Mormon testifies of these truths. We're led by a living prophet today, and I pray that the Lord may bless you, my dear brothers and sisters, as you teach and testify. Brothers and sisters, I add my testimony of the divine mission of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray that he will bless all of us in our efforts to inspire and motivate more of our youth and couples to serve a full-time mission. Brothers and sisters, as we hold up like a banner the proclamation to the world on the family, and as we live and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will fulfill the measure of our creation here on earth. We will find peace and happiness here and in the world to come. We should not need a hurricane or other crisis to remind us of what matters most. The gospel and the Lord's plan of happiness and salvation should remind us. What matters most is what lasts longest, and our families are for eternity. I bear testimony that if we will just do some of these simple things, the Lord will lead us to find tens of thousands of Heavenly Father's children who are ready to be taught the gospel. 
our love for the Lord, our appreciation for His atoning sacrifice, and His mission to have all come unto Him should provide all the motivation we need to be successful in sharing the gospel. May the Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters, with a greater faith and trust in Him as you reach out now to introduce the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people of the world. Brothers and sisters, be wise with your families. Be wise in fulfilling your church callings. Be wise with your time. Be wise in balancing all of your responsibilities. Oh, be wise, my beloved brothers and sisters. What more can I say? May God bless us with wisdom to love His Son, Jesus Christ, and wisely help accomplish His work. I bear my witness and testimony that He lives. This is His Church. We're about His work. May the peace of the Lord be with us, and may we wisely carry on our responsibilities. I bear solemn witness that we are true and full believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and in His revealed Word through the Holy Bible. We not only believe the Bible, we strive to follow its precepts and to teach its message. The message of our missionaries is Christ and His gospel and His atonement, and the scriptures are the text of that message. We say to all people, we extend our love to you and invite you to come. Let us share all that God has revealed. My brothers and sisters, we must help all people, including our own members, understand the power and importance of the Holy Bible. The Bible is scripture that leads us all and all mankind to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. May God grant us the desire and capacity to accept and live His teachings is my humble prayer. Brothers and sisters, never hesitate to bear your testimony with sincerity and love. The power of personal testimony cannot be denied and often ignites in others an interest to know more. I know this to be true, and I leave you my absolute witness that I know the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true. I pray that God will continually bless the women of the Church to find joy and happiness in their sacred roles as daughters of God. Now, in closing, I want to add my witness of President Monson's prophetic call. I have known him since he was 22 and I was 21. That's 58 years. I've watched the hand of the Lord prepare for this day for him to provide, preside over the Church as the prophet and president, and I add my testimony along with all of the other testimonies that have been born through this conference to His divine calling, His special calling as President of the Church, and add my testimony along with all the others also that Jesus is the Christ and this is His Church. We are doing His work. We cannot afford to be superficially righteous. Our testimonies must run deep with spiritual roots firmly embedded in the rock of revelation, and we must continue to move the work forward as a covenanted, consecrated people with faith in every footstep till the purposes of God shall be accomplished and the great Jehovah shall say, The work is done. You gain a vibrant, life-changing testimony today the same way it has always been done. The process hasn't been changed. It comes through a desire, study, prayer, 
obedience, and service. That is why the teachings of the prophets and apostles, past and present, are as relevant to your life today as they have ever been, that you may find joy and happiness and peace in the future by learning the great and eternal lessons of the past is my prayer for each one of you, for my grandchildren and all of the youth of the Church, wherever you may be. I am grateful for my sons and my son-in-laws who have taught me so much, and I pray now that our Heavenly Father will bless all of us as fathers and sons, that we will honor our priesthood, and that we will love one another by making relationships with each other one of the great eternal priorities of our lives. I conclude my counsel with the prophetic summary from President Joseph S. Smith. Our family associations are not exclusively intended for this life, for time, as we distinguish it from eternity. We live for time and for eternity. We form associations and relations for time and all eternity. Who are there besides the Latter-day Saints who contemplate that thought that beyond the grave we will continue in the family organization, the father, the mother, the children, recognizing each other, this family organization being a unit in the great and perfect organization of God's work, and all destined to continue throughout time and all eternity. May God bless us to teach, nurture, and prepare one another within the walls of our homes for the great work that must be done by all of us now and in the future. And for those of you who have fallen prey to any kind of addiction, there is hope because God loves all of His children and because the Atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ makes all things possible. I have seen the marvelous blessing of recovery that can come to set one free from the chains of addiction. The Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want as we trust in the power of the Atonement. I know the Lord can and will free the addicted from their bondage, for as the Apostle Paul claimed, acclaimed, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that this may be so with those who may be struggling with this challenge at this time in their lives. Great things are wrought through simple and small things, like the small flecks of gold that accumulate over time into a large treasure. Our small and simple acts of kindness and service will accumulate into a life filled with love for Heavenly Father, devotion to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, and a sense of peace and joy each time we reach out to one another. As we approach the Easter season, may we show our love and appreciation for the Savior's atoning sacrifice through our simple, compassionate acts of service to our brothers and sisters at home, at church, and in our communities. Back in 1948, at an October General Conference, President Al George Albert Smith said, Brethren and sisters, when you go away from here, you may be associating with various denominations of the world, but remember that there is only one church in all the world that by divine command bears the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, may we also remember this as we leave conference today. Let our testimonies of Him be heard and our love for Him always be in our hearts. Why did Jesus teach these parables? He wanted us to know that none of us will ever be so lost that we cannot find our way again through His Atonement and His teachings. 
as you seek to live the gospel and doctrine of Christ, the Holy Ghost will guide you and your family. You will have a spiritual GPS to tell you always where you are and where you are going. I bear witness that the resurrected Redeemer of mankind loves all of us, and He has promised if we will follow Him, He will lead us safely back into the presence of our Heavenly Father. It is my humble prayer, brothers and sisters, that we will ask in our daily prayers for the inspiration to find someone for whom we can provide some meaningful service, including the service of sharing the gospel truths and our testimonies. At the end of each day, may we be able to say yes to the question, have I done any good in the world today? Have I helped anyone in need? This is God's work. May we be about it as faithfully and as dedicated as little honeybees go about theirs. God has freely given His power to those who accept and honor His priesthood, which leads to the promised blessings of immortality and eternal life. I testify that the work of Jesus Christ is accomplished through the priesthood. It is the power by which our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son created this earth and set in motion the great plan of happiness for our sakes. May we be wise and seek to strengthen our own lives, the lives of our families, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints through the power of the priesthood of God. From my own experience, I can testify to you that the Lord will hear your prayers and you will have many opportunities now and for years to come to introduce the gospel of Jesus Christ to Heavenly Father's precious children. President Monson, we have listened. We will all seek to find the one. I pray that all of us may experience the great joy that comes from missionary service. It is my testimony that as we work together, seeking the one, inviting and following up with trust and faith, the Lord will smile upon us and hundreds of thousands of God's children will find purpose and peace in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. May the Lord bless all of us in our efforts to hasten the work of salvation. Brothers and sisters, stay in the boat. Use your life jackets. Hold on with both hands. Avoid distractions. And if any one of you have fallen out of the boat, we will seek you, find you, and minister to you and pull you safely back onto the old ship Zion, where God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are at the helm. On Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the dead, promising new life for each of us. The risen Lord then commissioned His disciples to teach everyone to have faith in Christ, repent of sin, be baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and endure to the end. Brethren, we know that God our Father and His beloved Son appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith and restored through him the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Be strong, brethren. Keep the commandments of God. The Lord Jesus Christ promises all things we do not desire to do in righteousness will be ours. Church leaders are counting on you. We need every one of you young adults to prepare to marry, to serve, 
and to lead in the days ahead. Beautiful old ship Zion, for without it we are cast adrift alone and powerless, swept along without rudder or oar, swirling with the strong currents of the adversary's wind and waves. Hold tight, brothers and sisters. Sail on within the glorious ship, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we will reach our eternal destination. This is my testimony and prayer for all of us. In the name of He for whom the old ship Zion is named, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Combined with prayer, a family council will invite the presence of the Savior as He promised. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Inviting the Spirit of the Lord to be part of your family council brings blessings beyond description. Finally, Please remember that a family council held regularly will help us root family problems and spot them and root them out very, very much more quickly. They will give each family member a feeling of worth and importance. And most of all, they will assist us to be more successful and happy in our precious relationships within the walls of our own homes. May our Heavenly Father bless all of our families as we counsel together is my humble prayer. I testify there is no other name given nor any other way nor means whereby salvation can come unto the children of men, only in and through the name of Christ. I also testify that Jesus Christ has called apostles and prophets in our day and restored His Church with teachings and commandments as a refuge from the storm and wrath that will surely come unless the people of the world repent and return to Him. I further testify that the Lord inviteth them all to come unto Him and partake of his goodness, and he denieth none that come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female, all are alike unto God. Jesus is our Savior and Redeemer, and his restored gospel will lead us safely back to the presence of our heavenly parents. If we remain on the gospel path, and follow in His footsteps. I testify there is no greater goal in mortality than to live eternally with our heavenly parents and our beloved Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is more than just our goal. It is also their goal. They have a perfect love for us, more powerful than we can even begin to comprehend. They are totally, completely, eternally aligned with us. We are their work. Our glory is their glory. More than anything else, they want us to come home to return and receive eternal happiness in their presence. My dear brothers and sisters, in one week we will celebrate Palm Sunday commemorating Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. In two weeks, we will celebrate Easter Sunday, commemorating the Savior's triumph over death. As we focus our attention on the Savior during these two special Sundays, let us remember Him and renew our lifelong commitment to keeping His commandments. Let us look deeply into our own lives setting our own goals and focusing our plans to align with God's in a way that will ultimately lead us toward our precious privilege to return and receive. We need to embrace God's children compassionately 
and eliminate any prejudice, including racism, sexism, or nationalism. Let it be said that we truly believe the blessings of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ are for every child of God. I testify that the trek continues, and I invite you to stay on the gospel path as you continue pressing forward by reaching out to all of God's children in love and compassion, that we, that we may unitedly make our hearts pure and our hands clean to receive the multiplicity of blessings await all who truly love our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son. May the Lord help and bless us to treasure our many precious gifts from God, including our membership in His restored Church. I pray we will be filled with love for our Heavenly Father's children and be able to see their needs and be willing to answer their questions and concerns about the gospel in clear and kind ways, which will increase understanding and appreciation for one another. I testify that Jesus Christ is our Savior. What we will be taught at this general conference comes to us by inspiration from apostles and prophets, from general authorities, and sister leaders who are general officers of the Church. May the joy and peace of the Lord abide with each one is my humble prayer. I testify that the vision President Joseph F. Smith received is true. I bear witness that every person can read it and come to know it is true. Those who don't, do not receive this knowledge in this life will surely come to know it is, of its truthfulness when they and everyone will arrive in the spirit world. There all will love and praise God and the Lord Jesus Christ for the great plan of salvation, the blessing of the promised resurrection, when body and spirit will once again be united, never to be separated again. How grateful I am today, my brothers and sisters, to know where my precious Barbara is and that we will be together again with our family for all eternity. May the peace of the Lord sustain all of us now and forever is my humble prayer. My service in the Church has blessed me with many remarkable and special spiritual experiences. I'm a witness that the Lord directs His Church to accomplish His purposes. I received divine guidance far beyond my capacity. The joy of gospel living for me has been centered on the true, pure, and simple doctrine and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have served under the keys and directions of six prophets and church presidents from Spencer W. Kimball to Russell M. Nelson. I testify that each one of them was and is God's chosen prophet. They have taught us essential principles about the Church and the gospel and the doctrine of Christ. President Nelson is carrying the Lord's work forward at a breathtaking pace. I say breathtaking because he's the only one of the apostles who is older than me, and I'm having a difficult time keeping up with him. I am a witness that the priesthood keys and the mantle of a prophet of God are upon him. President Nelson teaches the pure, the true, the pure and simple gospel of Jesus Christ. I bear my testimony that Jesus is the Christ and this is His Church. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to slow down a bit and think about where you are now in subjugating your carnal nature and empowering your divine spiritual nature. So when the time comes, 
you may pass into the spirit world to a joyful reunion with your loved ones. For this, for all of us, I humbly pray. As we listen to the Spirit during this 200th anniversary celebration this weekend, consider what offering you will present to the Lord in righteousness in the coming days. Be courageous. Share it with someone you trust, and most importantly, please take time to do it. I know that the Savior is pleased when we present Him an offering from our hearts in righteousness, just as He was pleased with the faithful offering of those remarkable brothers, Joseph and Hiram Smith, and all other faithful saints. Of this, I solemnly testify. I invite all church members as well as our neighbors and friends of other faith groups worldwide to do as the Savior counseled his disciples. Watch ye therefore and pray always for peace, for comfort, for safety, and for the opportunities to serve one another. How great is the power of prayer and, our, <clears throat> and how needed are our prayers and faith in God and His beloved Son in the world today. Let us remember and appreciate the power of prayer. Every member in our quorums, organizations, wards, and stakes has God-given gifts and talents that can help build up His kingdom now. Let us call upon our members who are single to serve, lift, and teach. Disregard old notions and ideas that have sometimes unintentionally contributed to their feelings of loneliness and that, that they do not belong or cannot serve. I bear my witness on this Easter weekend of our Savior Jesus Christ and the eternal hope He gives me and all who believe in His name. I testify that we are blessed to have the gospel of Jesus Christ to guide us in the way we live and treat each other. In Him, we discover that every daughter and son of God is precious to Him. I testify that Jesus Christ is our beloved Savior. He's the only begotten Son of God. I pray that you young men and the young women and your parents will see and know how missionary service will bless forever your life. May you know in your minds and feel in your hearts the power of the invitation of the Lord that he gave to the great missionary sons of Mosiah. He said, Go forth and establish my word. Yea, ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions, that ye may show forth good example in me and I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. May God bless the youth of the church to desire to prepare and serve him is my humble prayer. I testify that Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Redeemer, our Advocate with the Father. Our Heavenly Father has opened the way for us to return to Him by following His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, with faith in every footstep. It is important to follow the prophet and keep our feet firmly planted on the covenant path of faithfulness as it was for the early pioneers. 
Let us follow Jesus Christ with faith in every footstep. We need to serve the Lord and serve one another. We need to strengthen ourselves spiritually by keeping and honoring covenants. We should not lose the sense of urgency to keep the commandments. Satan tries to dull our commitment and our love for God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please remember that if anyone should lose their way, we'll never be lost to our Savior. With the blessing of repentance, we can turn to Him. He will help us learn, grow, change as we strive to stay on the covenant path. May we ever follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and with faith in our every footstep, focus on Him, keeping our feet firmly planted on the covenant path is my humble prayer. I testify and witness to you that I know that Jesus Christ is the Savior and Redeemer of the world. He lives. He is the resurrected Son of God, and this is His Church, led by His prophet and apostles. I pray that someday when I pass to the next world, I may do so with my testimony burning brightly. In my ministry, I have learned what matters most is our relationships with Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, our families and our neighbors, and allowing the Spirit of the Lord to guide us in those relationships so we can testify of the things that matter most and last longest. I leave you my witness and testimony that I know that Jesus is the Christ. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. He is our best friend in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.